Hello, I'm Jonathan Weinberg, and this is another one of my fountain pen reviews. Um, as always, if you enjoy this, don't forget to like it and subscribe. That's the way to sort of support the channel. I appreciate it. Um, this today is a little different. Um, I'm focusing on a pen that it's not particularly one that would come to mind that an artist necessarily would use because it's particularly good for drawing, but it is a pen I think that was particularly designed, has almost a work of art. Um, I don't think there's any pen company more involved in design and really always constantly sort of perfecting and thinking about what a fountain pen should look like in the modern world than Lamy. Um, probably on everybody's list of the most beautifully designed pen of the 20th century would be the Lamy 2000. And uh, maybe on that list also would be the Lamy Safari. So these are two pens that are kind of iconic and are sort of the model of what good design is supposed to be. Both pens are both beautiful and at the same time function very, very well. Um, Lamy's had a series of other pens that I think have been quite nice, but maybe not as successful, and they have sort of gone out of their way to um, hire um, designers to uh, make their pens. And this is a really interesting pen. I actually have two of them. This is the Lamy Accent. I don't think it was um, or has been so hugely successful. Um, it was developed in 1998, um, that's before I was sort of obsessed with the fountain pen, so I don't know how, as people can comment, you know, maybe when it first came out or the first 10 years. It certainly seems to have been one design, some design wards, I believe. Um, it's designed by the Phoenix Design Studio. It's now just called Phoenix, and that is Andreas Hogg and Tom um, Schoenherd, and it's a design studio based in Stuttgart, and they're particularly well-known for being involved in the early days of uh, Apple and helping to design some of the early Apple computers. Um, I, I've said this before, Lamy often gets associated with the Bauhaus. I think that's because it's sort of like the origins of modernist design and the fact that Lamy is a German company. Um, and particularly, I think, in this design, this, as I say, um, it's called the Lamy Accent, the whole concept of the Bauhaus uh, is to for form to follow function, right, um, and and to emphasize function. And I don't think you can argue that that's particularly the case in this pen. Um, however, also the Bauhaus was known for for its um, uh, machine design work for. Um, it's um, clean lines, it's geometry, and these are all qualities that all of the Lamy pens tend to emphasize, particularly in their materials, the materiality of their pens. Um, uh, Lamy itself says that this particular design emphasizes things like symmetry and geometry. Interestingly enough, they say almost nothing about function. Um, where um, a good Bauhaus designer would emphasize, I think, does it write well? Does it function well? Has the, has the form and the function been considered in great depth so that the two are uh, wedded together? I don't think that's particularly the aim here in the pen. What the aim was in this pen was to come up, and they claimed it's the first example of this. I don't necessarily know if that's true, to come up with a design that the user could customize. So, and what is that? Well, that's these grips that can be changed on the pen, and you can decide that, let's say, you get tired of this um, well, wooden grip, this gray, gray wooden grip, you can put the, I think it's called the briarwood or rosewood grip on it, or you can put this kind of cow modeled design on it, or you could have a rubber grip on it, or the rhodium grip. Now these are two versions of the pen. This is the less expensive version, the palladium version of the pen, um, and it has a nib which is the standard safari nibs. Um, it uses the standard safari nibs. 
This is a more expensive, lacquered version, I think is what you'd say, this material, the shiny black material. And this grip, if you were to get it separately, is more expensive than some of the other grips. Certainly the rubber grip is probably the cheapest. This grip is made out of with rhodium. And this pen, when you buy it, comes with a 14 karat uh, nib that also will fit on a Safari pen. And also you can see it's on the uh, Palladium Studio pen. Um, so it's another opportunity actually to kind of try out the 14 karat uh, nib that some people are buying. You can buy it separately and some people put it on their Safari pens to see if it's really superior to the steel nibs um, on a Safari pen. So what's exciting about this pen is that you can swap out the grips and actually if you have these if you have two ver these two pens in fact you can switch the the um, parts of that and you could mix them together to create a different kind of pen but that's I don't think that's what they have in mind. So what are we talking about? You take the, um, the top off and you unscrew it and it uses a converter or a cartridge. It doesn't come with a converter. There it is with a cartridge. And you can see this part comes out. And you can put this guy on it. It kind of fits in. It doesn't screw in, sort of slot it. It slots in. And then you put this in like that. You, then you screw the whole thing together. You put the top on it. it screws. It looks like the top would um, just fit on, but it doesn't. It actually screws on. And then you have a new pen, right, with a new different grip. And um, the other thing to say is that the pen posts. You have to be careful when you unscrew it because when you unscrew it from the top, you can um, unscrew the grip part. And it's nice. I, I find it very comfortable. The grip is slightly rounded. You see it kind of bends out. And that gives you, an. I feel it's very comfortable when you put this, feel it in your hand and when you're writing with it. Um, and, and there's nothing really doesn't hurt at all. And it's not too slippery. Um, so it's not as if they didn't think about the function. It posts very securely, although it's kind of long. And it's not terribly heavy pen. The whole pen is 26 grams. And there you go. Let's try that again. Take the top off. And here you can see, excuse me, the 14 karat nib, which is two-toned. It comes with a more expensive pen. And when you buy this pen, at least it listed quite much more where the, um, the steel version would be originally, I think it was in the $100 range. This was well over $200, although I was able to get it quite discounted. So here it is again, comes out, and then this is a nice combo, it's rose wood. And of course, what they wanted, wanted to happen, oh, I put it on backwards. See, they, they actually, it's one way that it goes. There are these metal elements that fit in. There, click thin, goes like that. And I think that's very pretty. Particularly with the two-toned 14 karat nib. I really like that. And of course, what Lamy wants is for you to buy all the different grips. And then you have like a whole collection. Um, I actually think it, if you were really obsessed with this, it wouldn't be that difficult uh, to make these grips, make your own. You know, you could probably 3D print them somehow. I don't know if anybody's done that. If anybody's done that, I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, that's the idea. You would get the you can buy these different grips. But guess what? They still sell this pen 
in some places like at Gold Spot Pens. I've seen it in some places in the United States. Um, but I can't seem to find any place in the United States that sells the grips, extra grips. There are a lot of places online in Europe that sell them, but then you have to pay a lot for shipping or buy it on eBay. And eBay, they are, they're quite expensive, much more expensive. than for, for example, the rubber grip, which is very nice, it's kind of comfortable, it gives it a kind of comfortable feeling, is, um, you know, it should only be around $8.00. Um, or eight euros, but when you put shipping on and everything else, it becomes thirty, forty dollars. So I, my guess is that Lamy is phasing this pen out, at least in the United States, and um, I don't know if it's if they're phasing it out in Europe as well. But it seems that it's not very well supported, and there are a lot of the grips are no longer available. They come in different. They, for example, they come in different colors. I was able to get this black and white one. I really like this black and white one, but there's a green and black one that I sort of like. This is CNN Breaking News. Uh, breaking news. I actually just called the Lamy store in Soho, and they actually said they have a few of the colored um, grips. But not, you know, not some of the, it doesn't sound like the more interesting ones, but just a few that are in different colors are available. Not, not let's say, the green, black, and white one or some of the more exotic grips. Um, and they, I don't see that you can buy them on a website um, or even Lamy's U.S. website doesn't seem to carry them. Um, but as I say, you can get them in Europe. So these are becoming sort of, already I think they're kind of um, collector items. And since I really, really like Lamy pens, and I thought this was the time to go get them. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do some writing samples with them. They, they write like Safari pens, so there shouldn't be any surprises with that. And I have done... A drawing with one of them uh, using the 14 karat nib. Um, uh, I've done a tulip picture where I draw it and then did watercolored it. And I, I really like the pen in terms of its comfort. I think it's very comfortable. I think it's kind of beautiful. It doesn't photograph well. I think it looks really great when you see it in person. When you see it um, in a photograph, it looks a little clunky. You have to say, you kind of get used to it. Um, in terms of this idea of customizing it, um, you know, it's it's not a huge difference. You know, it's not like you're really getting to customize it. And from what I understand, in Japan, for example, there are pens by sailor in stores where you can choose every aspect of the pen, the different caps, different bodies, different, you know, they're, they're, they've sort of come up with this whole um, customizing aspect of sort of make your own pen. And that and these really, I don't think, really live up to that um, hope. And particularly, they don't live up to it if you can't buy, if you can't get the grips easily. So that part isn't so great. But um, on the other hand, I think precisely because they're getting a little hard to find, they're nice, they're interesting from a kind of collector's um, standpoint. Um, so I, I, as always, I salute Lamy for doing something different for making something that isn't, you know, it's not the same old cigar-shaped pen. Um, it it it's it's got a flair. I think this. I think it's elegant. These are all things that I think uh, are are really worthy things uh, for um, a pen company to do. Um, I should also say, by the way, because we're so I'm so obsessed with fountain pens, is that these come as roller. I think rollerball pens, pencils. You know, and I believe you can use the grips, the same grips in all of those different um, forms. Um, and that, of course, is another aspect of Lamy design because you, know, you tend to see that in fountain pens. You tend to think, oh, you know, it's all about the fountain pens. But when you have a big company like Lamy, they have to design the pen. or They think about designing the pen that so that it can work as a fountain pen and it can work as a pencil. They also... Um, you know, want to be able to probably reuse a lot of machinery or to use, you know, to make it in the same factory. So there are all these aspects that have to go in 
to the design that's sort of behind the scenes that we we don't know about it. The fit and finish of this pen is just really beautiful. I, I mean, I can't tell you how beautiful this black lacquer is. I think it's just stunning. And um, I really like, you know, all these different combinations that you can do. This, that's really nice. This would look pretty good, I think, with simple rubber version. Okay, that's nice. Um, always interesting to see how big this pen is. Here's a comparison with the Metropolitan. Here's a comparison with the Safari. Okay, so I will do a writing sample and then I'll do a drawing. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Okay. This is the Lamy accent, 14K broad nib, and I'm actually using Asa Gawa, that's how you pronounce it, you know, Pilot ink in a Lamy cart cartridge. I've been reusing Lamy cartridges and putting ink in them. I like that. Okay. Um, it's quite wet when it's the 14 cake and it has a little bit of a bounce to it. It's very smooth. It doesn't have any flex to it at all, I would say. Very little. It does have a little bounce to it and it is more pleasant than the standard Safari nib, but question is, is it that much pleasant? And I really like the Safari steel nibs. Uh... Writing. I don't think it really has much reverse writing to it. Okay, so that's the 14K nib. And this is the Lamy Accent steel nib. And I think this is a medium actually. And this is Salami regular cartridge. And it's very nice, very pleasant, I think. A little more feedback than the 14K version. Now the reason I got the 14K is it came with a beautiful lacquer pen, and so why not? I mean, they came that way, and I got it for a very discounted price, so it was a good bargain. But I wouldn't pay $120 for extra for the 14K. Um, very nice. Both pens are very nice, and I, I really like the comfort of the grip and where it where it falls and everything. I think it's very nice weight. It's nice to write with. You know, looking at this, I think, I have to tell you, I put Asagawa in both of these cartridges because both these inks are exactly the same. Truth in advertising. So they're both very nice. Now I'm going to do a drawing, a watercolor. Uh.